Well, it all started with the oyster kill in George's Bay in February, end of January, February 2004, when we had the huge flood here. There was a, a possible toxicant in the surface waters, something that had been brought down with that flood and was floating on the surface and the oysters that came in contact with that water uh, died. Not only were oysters killed though, it was crabs, it was starfish, it was, um, you know, there was lots of dead fish and so forth around the edges. It got us thinking about why this had happened and we realised there had been a helicopter that had crashed in the upper catchment of the George River in December 2003. And so that's how our interest started in water issues. These helicopters have the ability to spray at a rate of 400 litres per four minutes. Uh, so we believe that the amount of chemical that was put on up in our catchment uh, prior to the floods, three weeks prior to the floods, uh, certainly had a potential there to, to cause our oysters to roll over and die. We decided to do our own investigations and we did some testing, toxicity testing um, of the water from the George River and that came back positive. So in fact we told the authorities and they repeated the testing but in actual fact there has been no thorough investigation or uh, definition of exactly what the toxin or toxins in the water are. Well, Tassie is an interesting location to do any investigations in wild, into wildlife health because it's uh, an island and it's, it's got such a good diversity of, of wildlife. In the last 20, 25 years we've seen some very disturbing trends in the emergence of new diseases and some of these diseases um, are hard to explain because uh, they're, they're just absolutely new, unique to science in some cases. Atrazine was the number one selling pesticide in the world. Um, now it's second only to glyphosate. A lot of atrazine is applied and the problems are uh, both how much is applied but also that it's fairly persistent. So even though it supposedly has a pretty short half-life, in the real world when it's in groundwater, um, when it's in aquifers, it can last for up to 20 years. One would predict from laboratory rat studies that atrazine can have dramatic adverse effects on the developing human fetus. And rats, exposed mothers, um, will often experience abortion because of the hormone imbalance that atrazine creates. Um, and when the sons and daughters of exposed mothers are born, they can be born with prostate disease because the mother was exposed and presumably either atrazine or inappropriate hormone levels cross the placenta and expose the fetus. Um, the females can be born with a uh, increased likelihood of developing mammary cancer or breast cancer. And studies by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency show that the daughters of exposed mothers in, in laboratory rats can be born with poor breast development. So the effect can be seen across two generations. It seems to me that just everything's not right. People are depressed, the kids are increased number of kids with autism, increased number of kids with behaviour problems, increased number of kids with food allergies, rashes, some people with really bad asthma, really weird autoimmune things, nasty urticarias, um, general problems with people's gastrointestinal tracts, general ill health. Um, increase in cancers, all sorts of cancers, especially reproductive cancers. I think from the point of view of uh, aqu aquatic ecologies, uh, the, the, the disease that's most troubling at the moment is the platypus ulcer disease, um, which is a fungal infection, but quite an unusual um, skin ulcer um, occurring on the feet and back uh, of, of um, platypus, and it can be quite disabling and we, we know it kills platypus. The other one that is a real worry for Tasmania is the devil facial tumour disease, which is, again, just totally new to science, an infectious tumour, a transmissible tumour that is without, without any, any counterpart in the human um, um, 
neoplastic uh, cancer research area. So again, we've got to look at you know how how did this disease come from nowhere and decimate uh, a population of our highest carnivore. So they're just two, but there th there are many many more. The community audit's been published and we've shown basically systemic failure on the parts of local, state and federal government departments um, in the way that they uh, use chemicals in the environment, in that the way they police it, the way their, their governance, and really show very, very poor, in fact, no protection for the environment or people um, as regards chemical use. In the United States, atrazine is allowable in drinking water at three parts per billion. And, and so some people are led to believe that that means that three parts per billion is safe. But that's 30 times what it takes to make a hermaphroditic frog. And here in Tasmania, in Australia, atrazine is allowed in the drinking water at 40 parts per billion. That's 400 times what it takes to chemically castrate and make hermaphroditic frogs. There's the testis. And what you can see on both sides is in addition to testis, all the structure that you see in the back, these are eggs. This is a male that's grown eggs in his testis and that is yoking eggs in his testis so that the eggs are bursting through the surface of his testis. The EPA acknowledges the data, but they say, well, we don't know if that's an adverse effect. <laughs> I don't know, if I had a dozen chicken eggs bursting through my testis, I know it's a little personal, but <laughs> I thought of a dozen chicken eggs bursting out of my testis. But I'm no regulator, so. And I point out that the regulators here are following the EPA's recommendations. Well, the Australian Drinking Water Guidelines have been developed over many years and many, many people have um, assisted in producing these results. Tasmania has decided to selectively take part of these and has decided not to have any chemical reporting or uh, by any water bodies as a mandatory process. So th that I think is a very difficult issue, especially with the amount of pesticides being used in catchments and no catchment risk assessments being done. I think if you look at the increases in problems with fertility in men, I think if you look at the increases in prostate cancer in the United States and, and worldwide in the Western world, the increases in breast cancer, um, you know, there's no other explanation than the changes in our environment are leading to an increase in, in these problems. I think to think that we can wait around for a cure and keep doing what we're doing to the environment is really sort of a backwards way of thinking that we really have to think about how do we take these things out of the environment to help improve the health of wildlife and, and our own health. Um, I don't think waiting is an option. I think we really have to act now because the problem is only getting worse. I mean Tasmania has been you know, basing its, its, its sort of uh, position in the world on its clean, green, disease-free, pristine image and I, I just think this, this has become just a, 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 ret a rhetoric that has, has been, been used to, to really cover up the fact that we may not be as clean and green, pristine or as disease free as, as the charlatans would make out that we are. And that's a travesty because it's saying that we are trading on a lie. I believe we are trading on a lie now and the more the more we can do to not only just just say we're, we're looking and finding things, but we're, we're actually mitigating against these problems, then um, Tasmania will have to rewrite its own rhetoric. It's going to have to say, we aren't so clean and green, but we're trying to get there. All people should have the same protection that Europe has given its citizens. I think that we should be protected from atrazine in the same way that Switzerland, the home of the, the home country of the makers of atrazine, we should be protected the same way they protected their citizens. There's no way the European Union has decided that we can use atrazine in a way that prevents it from getting into the drinking water and potentially affecting environmental health and human health. And I think that the United States, Australia, and every country in the world should adopt the same policy. It should be banned.